Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we are going to talk about my favorite sort of battleship propulsion, the uh, style that I think is most redundant and most survivable, which is not the style on Iowa class battleships. So today we are talking about turbo electric propulsion which was uniquely American and uniquely used on the later standard class battleships. It is a steam propulsion plant uh, that is turbine driven, sort of similar to the steam turbines that Battleship New Jersey was built with. Uh, however, it is both uh, heavier and more expensive, but in my opinion, and this is still debated by historians, uh, in my opinion, it is the more survivable system. We're in the officer's galley today with the uh, official cooking knife of Battleship New Jersey, Kamakoto kitchen knives. These are made of high quality Japanese steel. Each knife comes with a certificate of authenticity, instructions on how to sharpen it, and they come in this fine ash wood box, which makes them uh, an excellent gift idea. It's real easy to wrap this up, transport, take it somewhere for uh, Christmas. Each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. Our box comes with a set of three knives here. I don't know anything about cooking, but we've released some other videos recently where we use these Kamakoto knives to cut fire hose, which is one of the toughest things to cut here on the ship. And they're used by Michelin quality chefs all over the world. Kamakoto has several special offers going on right now and is offering my viewers an extra $50 off with any purchase using discount code BATTLESHIP. This is on top of the other special offers that they have right now for the holiday season. Go to kamakoto.com battleship today to get your knife set and support the museum. So, uh, Iowa class battleships have the steam turbines in one half of the engineering spaces and those are what are providing propulsive power. And then they've got turbo generators like these here that are creating electrical power. On the other side of the forward bulkhead of each engine room is a fire room with boilers. The boilers are sending steam into the turbines and the turbo generators and the uh, main propulsion units are both examples of turbines. On a steam turbine ship like Battleship New Jersey and the other fast battleships, and, and most battleships uh, for that matter, the steam goes into the propulsion unit and that turns a propeller directly. On turbo electric ships, other steam goes into turbo generators like these and that creates the electrical power that goes into the lighting and the motors and the other electrically driven things on the ship. On a turbo electric ship, they exclusively have turbo generators like this that are creating electrical power. And the electrical power from the turbo generators feeds large electric motors that are spinning propeller shafts, as well as the ele other electrical needs of the ship. So, uh, turbo electric ships have significantly greater power generation capacity uh, in terms of electrical power, not necessarily horsepower, um, than other battleships. And that's a good thing. American battleships during World War II had twice the power generating capacity of any other battleships out there. Uh, an Iowa class battleship has eight of these 1250 kilowatt turbo generators on board, plus two auxiliary diesel generators. Uh, so they can make a lot of electrical power. And it was plenty for when they were designed in the 1940s. But by the 1980s, as new systems are installed on the ships that are um, adding more radars that require high energy outputs and more computers and other electrical equipment like that and missiles, um, things like this that you push a button and electrical things happen and then the thing shoots, uh, as opposed to the ship's main guns. Like the... These systems required more electricity than the Iowa-class battleships could provide. We could not simultaneously fire missiles and shoot the guns. There just isn't enough electrical power generated by the ship to do that in the 1980s. And you can't swap out these turbo generators because they're in the armored citadel. 
Uh, so that means cutting through the 12 inch armored belt or the triple bottom or the six inch armored deck to get these big things out of here and put newer, bigger things in here. And you can see there's a little bit of spare space here in engine room number one. Uh, but we start making these bigger and you don't have much room to work on this anymore. Uh, so that is one issue with steam turbine ships like New Jersey. And, you know, that this ship was never designed to be operated 50 years after she was originally designed. You, you don't design ships like that, especially not during World War II. Uh, so, hey, maybe that's an aberration. None of the turboelectric ships survived that long after they were uh, built. The other issue is the torpedo defense of Iowa-class battleships proved to be deficient compared to Japanese-designed torpedoes during World War II, and they are even more deficient against modern torpedoes. Uh, so, a torpedo hit on an Iowa-class battleship is going to flood one-eighth of the engineering spaces on the ship. So we've got four fire rooms and four engine rooms. If it hits the citadel and defeats the torpedo defense system. Turboelectric ships are able to be significantly more subdivided. So, uh, some notable turboelectric ships uh, include, like I said, the Big Five, the light standard type battleships of the Tennessee and Colorado class, and subsequent classes of battleships like the first South Dakota class and the Lexington class battle cruisers, both of which are canceled by the Washington Naval Treaty. Now, the battle cruisers Lexington and Saratoga are completed as aircraft carriers with absolutely massive power generation capability. In fact, uh, an earthquake that damaged the power grid in Seattle uh, was basically defeated by the U.S. Navy, uh, repaired by the U.S. Navy by sending it to port, but uh, plugging it into the power grid there, and that carrier had enough power generation capacity on board to feed that entire city. Uh, so we've talked a lot at this point about what I don't like about steam turbines. For a turboelectric drive ship, you just have turbo generators like this around the ship. And because you've got a bunch of smaller things like this instead of one big turbine unit with a high pressure and a low pressure and a gear reduction box, uh, taking up half of the internal volume of an engine room, you can add significantly more subdivision to your ship. Also, you have steam pipes coming into your turbines to provide the steam that spins them, but you don't need a long shaft coming out of there. The Iowa class battleships have, have propeller shafts that are over 300 feet long. Another benefit of uh, turboelectric drive is because you're just sending electrical power to a motor, it is really quick to reverse. Whereas with steam turbine, the steam has to come in in a different direction and then spin the uh, turbine blades a different direction. It's got to slow down from the direction it's going, build up steam the other way, and that's building up speed on the propeller shaft. Uh, with turboelectric, steam goes into the turbo generator one way, makes the electrical power, and then whether you're reversing the motor or going forward on the motor, it's much quicker to just put the electric charge in there and have it change the speed of the propeller as opposed to waiting for the steam to overcome inertia. So these ships are not only uh, more survivable, they're more maneuverable. With a turboelectric ship, you can just run a 440 power cable from your turbo generator back to the back of the ship where your electric motor is and then just have a shaft coming out of there. So while it is more weight to put a bunch of uh, turbo generators and a bunch of big electrical cables on board, you are saving weight elsewhere with your length of shafting and other things like that. Uh, and we see at least one battleship during World War II, Prince of Wales, sink because a torpedo hits the shaft and it then spins for a long length of the ship uh, outside of what's supposed to hold it, which opens up all of these bulkheads, which allows progressive flooding to sink a modern battleship. Uh, that does not happen on the turboelectric ships. 
The major downsides of a turboelectric ship are it is more expensive. Instead of having like a black iron pipe, you're using big, thick copper uh, power cables. It's more expensive and heavier to install this. And so even though the pre-World War II U.S. Navy really loved turboelectric, and remember, the U.S. Navy battleships are gold-plated. The, the price is not really an object. We're building our ships out of STS steel while other countries are using mild steel. We're, we're uh, really building more expensive vessels. But the real issue is it is heavier. And limited by the Washington Naval Treaty, they couldn't cut the weight enough from armor and guns to be able to go with this redundant engine system. The other major issue uh, many historians cite is turboelectric ships that are hit during World War II, uh, primarily Saratoga, hit multiple times by torpedoes, um, lost all electrical power, which then drops pumps, electrical power, propulsion, everything. Um, and there's an argument between historians that, oh, that's an aberration, those hits happen to be like Murphy's Law, worst case scenario, or no, all turboelectric ships are bad and would have suffered from that, and hits like that prove that turboelectric ships are uh, bad. And Personally, if I was building a battleship, and one that was not limited by uh, the Washington Naval Treaties, I would absolutely go with turboelectric. Uh, any capital ship, really. When you get down to like light cruisers and destroyers, the survivability of the plant is not that important. But for a ship like an aircraft carrier, a battleship, a battle cruiser, even some of the large heavy cruisers, uh, more subdivision is better, in my opinion. So check out the internal subdivision of, uh, say, here's, here's a blueprint below the waterline of a Colorado-class battleship or a Lexington-class aircraft carrier and see just how many separate boxes there are in there compared to an Iowa-class battleship where you see here are just eight big spaces. A torpedo defeats the torpedo defense and that whole thing floods. A bomb defeats the armored deck uh, and explodes in here. You lose the entire engine room. You don't just lose one of your boilers or one of your turbo generators. And I would dare say that because you are adding more weight in subdividing and propulsion, you could subtract some weight from your armor and be willing to take a shell, a bomb, a torpedo hit that's going to disable one of these spaces, but know that it is a small 20 by 20 or 40 by 40 box uh, that is being uh, disabled as opposed to an entire 80 by 60 foot main space on an Iowa class battleship. And remember, Iowa class battleships are twice as subdivided as the North Carolinas or the South Dakotas. So a hit on one of them takes out one quarter of your reserve of buoyancy. What method of propulsion do you think is best for battleships? Oil-fired steam turbine? Coal-fired nuclear steam turbine? Turbo-electric, like we've been talking about today? Uh, gas turbines? diesel motors? Let us know in the comments section down below. There are definitely pros and cons for each one. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate the support from today's sponsor, Kamakoto Kitchen Knives. Remember to check the link in the description below for their special uh, Black Friday discount. Remember to use the code BATTLESHIP you can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the channel and the museum. Thanks for watching.